Well, a lot of people document the first meeting of Rick and Bubba involved Spanish. Uh, we were at Jacksonville State University. We'd known each other from high school. We, 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 didn't, we went to rival high schools. We knew of each other. A lot of Bubba's cousins uh, and I went to school together and played football together. And so we were in a Spanish class. I'm not trying to say that we struggled, but uh, her family had fled Castro, and she said we made her want to go back. Uh, so it, that's when it all kind of started. Uh, Bubba and I kind of developed a, a friendship there, and then both of us were working at the campus radio station. Uh, me on the air and, and Bubba really on the on the engineering side and also management side and all that. That's really where it started. Yeah, we were, uh, I was the chief engineer at Q104 in Gadsden. We were needing a morning show and I said, well, why don't we, uh, why don't we give a call to Rick, my old college buddy. And the manager said, I don't know, I don't have his number. Said, well, you, you approach him about it. And I did. And, uh, you know, usually chief engineers are not the one to go out and negotiate talent contracts, but it was a lot. And so we got Rick over and then I started hanging out on the air with him. And before we knew it, it was Rick and Bubba. Yeah, that, that's, the, that's the short version right there. But we just wanted anyone to listen. Uh, yeah, we, anybody. We, yeah, any person. And so... Um, Technically, but, it was 8 to 80, blind, crippled, and crazy, but we would take anything. We would take anything. And that's the thing I think that was most shocking. Many times the show was pigeonholed by the programmers and consultants. Right. But we found when you actually looked at the ratings uh, that uh, they were about as many women as men uh, and the age demographic Seems to be what Bubba just said. I mean, we usually did well in 12 plus. We did well in 1834. We did well 2554, uh, you know, and, and, and above. And, and it was usually pretty even across the board. You know, not, not trying to brag, but we even stayed kind of hip with the young folks somehow. And obviously still very hip today. That's right. Well, we were on Q104 in Gadsden. Bubba and I had, that's kind of where we had kind of started. We did from 94 to 97 Something. there, 8. Mm -hmm. uh, so they, they moved the station uh, to Birmingham. Uh, but that was when the deregulation had taken place and companies could move signals. Bubba, you may need to chime here. Uh, but uh, it turned into a Birmingham station, and we were under contract you know, to still be on the air. We thought we were being moved to Birmingham because everybody loved us and wanted us to do well in Birmingham. But we found out as soon as we arrived... Uh, in no uncertain terms, that we would not be staying on the air in Birmingham, uh, that as soon as our contract was up, which I think was about 90 days. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was 90 days. They would be removing us because we were too small town for Birmingham. Uh, and so uh, we stayed on the air for 90 days, and that kind of changed everything. Yeah, the, we had a ratings period, and we came in number two uh, behind Patty. And uh, immediately, the first started flying everywhere mm -hmm. and, uh, and looked like we were going to be a Birmingham morning show at that point. So, again, the listeners pulled us through. Yep. Both of us from Calhoun County. Enough said. Uh, no, I don't know. I just, we always had it from the very beginning, and, and we talked about this on the show today. Chemistry cannot be taught. A consultant cannot make a, uh, a team be, have chemistry. It's either there or it's not. And we just were fortunate from that Spanish class on yep. that we always had that chemistry. I can't really explain it. It was just there. Or in our lingo, we're a dandy and a good one. There you go. Uh, we have been on 30, and we're in our 31st yeah. year. It'll be 31 when we wrap up. Well, Bubba and I are different. His approach is to get here early and, and ramp up. I've, I've never been able to do that. If I get here early, I get sleepy. So what I try to do is come right out of the shower, and if you've ever watched the show, been in the studio, or watched this on YouTube, my hair is usually wet in the first hour. Uh, I got to come out of the bed high energy and, and, and ready to go. Uh, but, uh, but I usually am thinking what I think all of us need to remember if you're in the entertainment business is there's a lot of people dependent on you. I mean, there are people that are going to give you their time uh, and, and make you a priority in their life, and, and they deserve for you to be, uh, to be a pro. You know, really, we draw off their energy. Yeah. Um, you know, the emails, the calls. Uh, there's many mornings I didn't feel like getting out of bed, and, you know, we will have a call, and somebody will talk about how important what we're doing is to their life. And, you know, those are the things that get you up every day. And we just appreciate the listeners. Words cannot describe mm. our appreciation for everyone over 30 years. Yeah, and I know you've had this experience, too. I'll, I'll see somebody out in the day long after the show, and they'll say something like what you right. said, and I will literally look at that person and say, now that right there will get me out of the bed in the morning. Yep. Uh, this is what I've wanted to do since I was a child, uh, and I can't believe I get to do it. Yep. Uh, and um, I, I, there's nothing I would want to do. So, no, I, I still love what I do every day. 
Yeah, it's fun. It's fun when we get here. Now, the alarm clock is not fun, but it's fun when we get here. I look forward to it, and uh, once we're here, we're having a ball. Look, uh, they've paid us, and, you know, we all got to earn a living, but, look, I think Rick would agree we would have done it for free. Right. I'm sh well, kind of. We still got to pay the bill. Right. Yeah, I, I think one of the things that has connected us to the audience is, is, is the fact that it's almost like their lives and our lives have just been running seamlessly together. And I think on, even on the humorous side, most of the connection to the show was, that sounds like my family gatherings. Oh, what happened to them at Walmart? That happened to me. My kid did that too. And then when you get to the difficulties, guess what? They've all been through difficulty too. And, you know, we're going through things like, you know, the death of one of our children, cancer that uh, Bubba went through, uh, tornadoes, uh, mothers and fathers passing away, uh, there's so many, but, but you know, it, when you say, you can't say, let's all open up our lives and then take the difficult parts of life and throw them out. They're part of it. But I, I think absolutely, because we're not afraid of those things and we don't hide from those things, I think that bonded us to the audience even more. You know, back in, in, in school, in broadcasting school, there's a, a term they call bleeding on the audience where yeah. they say, hey, yeah. don't, right. don't share medical things, don't share negative things. But that was a source of strength for us because, you know, we openly, we're believers, we ask for prayer. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was laid up in the hospital with a, a bout with liver cancer, mm. um, at six o'clock, at, at 10 after six, I, could, I felt different. And I knew it was because Rick had come on the air, he was updating my condition, people were praying for me, and I felt it. I mean, that was a real thing. Yeah. And uh, I wouldn't trade that for anything. Well, I think the feedback is important. You know, I will say this, there have been times to what we just talked about when I thought, well, maybe you know, some of the deep spiritual things we talk about, some of the rawness and the difficulties we've gone through. It, is that something the audience, you know, is that something they appreciate? Is that something they wish we wouldn't do? And, and we kept getting feedback that uh, it was the opposite. That they, they were thankful uh, to be able to glean from what we were going through and apply it to their own lives as much as the days they needed to laugh and got one of those. Because if it's happened to us, it's happened to them. Right. You know, and so it, I think, what we were going through, they were able to relate to and hopefully help them out too. Well, if you're, if you're talking about, you know, things that happen around the world, not in personal lives, it's 9-11. I mean, yeah. we, we were on the air as this was happening. And I, I meet people still to this day that says, I didn't know until y'all said something. And as y'all were trying to figure it out, so were we. So I think that probably rocked the audience from a national world standpoint more than anything we ever did on the air. Yeah, we, we stayed on after the show, and, uh, you know, we tried to be a calming voice, and we were trying to figure out what was happening like everybody else, and we were looking at what was coming in with disbelief like everybody else. We couldn't believe what we were seeing. Well, with me, it's usually when the Girl Scout cookies come out every year. Uh, that's, that's something I look forward to. No, we, we've had so many things and so many fun things we've got to do, and it's not because of us. It's because of the show and the audience allowing us to do that. And, you know, we've been to the White House. We've met presidents. Uh, we've drove race cars. We've met astronauts. And, you know, we, we've had fun doing that and tried to share that experience with the audience too. Yeah, and I, I think on the personal level on that stuff, Babies, our babies have been born yeah. uh, on the show. Um, our kids are getting married, and you know, we're celebrating that on the show. And, and I think anytime we hit milestones, you know, when the show began to grow, believe it or not, when we got our first good contract, uh, the audience was like, yay, they beat the man. Uh, <laughs> and, and now anybody could be in radio if these two are being successful. Maybe we all have hope. So they have really celebrated with us as much as they've cried with us, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, it's. I know this is a lot for Alabama, and we've got mm -hmm. an announcement about James Spann here at the end that's really going to upset some people. But, uh, you don't believe it. No, you know, no. Jay, we, we've told James he can't retire now because Saban and, and, and our show has. So I, I don't know. For me personally, I, I think that you know the industry has changed a lot, um, and, and, and it's, it's, it's more difficult to do what we do and to garner the kind of income that we have in the past. And so... Um, and plus, the brand is is so well liked right now. I, you, he and I both talked about this. We never, ever, ever wanted to be on the air, and we didn't want the audience to think the show was over before we did. And I don't think we ever got there. I think people seem as excited about it as ever. I'm thankful for that. I didn't want us to become a parody of ourselves. I didn't want it to become stale. 
uh, and, and we wanted to end it when it was still relevant, not let it go on until, unfortunately, it might get sad. And we had never committed to each other to go on longer than the current contract right. we were in. And uh, so over 30 years, we've probably had that meeting 9, 10, 11 times. And um, it, it's changing. I mean, we have a, a big show here with a lot of open microphones. Yep. And, uh, you know, we, we have stayed in it because we could do it the way we wanted to. Right. And those days are changing. Right. So it just looked like it was the right time. Uh, to do this, and uh, we're going to miss it. I, I really would like to continue a few more years, but uh, especially my guy that handles my retirement would like for me to finish a few more years in my banker, but uh, it's, uh, you know, I, by the way, any applications over there, uh, but it, it just, you, you could see the timing on this, and uh, so we're, we're glad to wrap it up, and it's going to be a celebration. We're going to blow this year out. We want to go Amen. out on top of ratings and revenue, and uh, we want to do a few things we've never done before, and we're going to have a lot of fun doing it, and we hope you'll be with us. Great statement in the entertainment business is this. Always leave them wanting more, and I th hopefully that's what we've done. I know this sounds like, well, this is, he's, this is but it really is true. It hadn't always been true. I'm a, I'm a devout follower of Jesus Christ, first and foremost. That's my identity. Everything outside of that is, is, is secondary. And, and if I wasn't able to do the show and see that being part of what we do, and I'm so thankful that it is, I probably would have tired of it long before now. That, that drives me probably more than anything, earning the right and seeing all the different people that have said the show was, was what, what, what brought me to redemption. The show was what introduced me to this. And, and so, um, you know, uh, now these days I, I, I want to be, uh, have be a wise father to my adult children. I look forward to, if the Lord allows, being a grandfather. I want to be a devoted husband to my, to my wife. And if I can be remembered for those things, then whether anybody thought I was a good radio show host or not is really irrelevant. Uh, but uh, I have a passion for men's ministry. I'm excited about themanchurch.com and the things we're seeing there because I think men are in trouble in, in our society. And, and, and we need to spend time on men and, and remind them of their identity in Christ so they can properly lead because their influence can't be turned off. And um, so away from the show, uh, probably leading a, a Sunday school class with my wife and, and uh, being part of a, a men's ministry uh, is what, uh, what I do more than anything. First and foremost, I'm a believer in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I want to show that in a positive way. I want people to see that. I want them to, to be influenced by the good things that I see in that. And that is a personal relationship. I want to be a good husband, a good father. Um, I like to, uh, I'm kind of a tech guy. I've been a ham radio operator since high school. I've got a lot of good friends in that. I've been a tennis player and uh, I like sports. Um, but, you know, it, it really, when you listen to the show, you know us. I mean, there's <laughs> right. nothing left. I mean, we're, we talk about everything in our life and what we're doing, and, and you know us. There, there's really no compartment there that's not exposed. I know this is a, we've been asked this question before, and I know I should answer differently, but I want to answer honestly. We actually thought the show would be do quite well. We just didn't think anybody would ever give us a chance. <laughs> uh, we, we really thought if we could have access to the audience that it would be successful. But there, there was a doubt that anyone would ever give us that opportunity. And we just have to thank God that he gave us access to the audience and then thank the audience for the way they responded. Yeah, I think uh, we, we knew that we could conquer anything we needed to. Um, and at the same time, I'm shocked about how it has gone and how long it has gone. Mm -hmm. And the love that we get from the audience is just unbelievable. Um, I knew we had fun goofing off, and I'm glad the audience has enjoyed it. But I, I tell you, they pick us up and hold us up, and they have for 30 years. And I, really, there's not words to describe it. I mean, I don't want to go to balling, but, uh, I mean, they're, they're awesome. Well, and don't you agree today on that note that is surprising? I knew there would be a response to this announcement we had today. But the response and the numbers in the response, I, straight up, they've, they've completely – surprise me. Um, I think a lot of times, and I would say this to advertisers out there, uh, especially this final year, don't miss this opportunity. Uh, <laughs> but, but I think a lot of you grossly underestimate how many people listen to and watch the show. Um, I know I have at times. It, it, it is, it's, it's shocking, uh, but also very encouraging.
Well, I, I think what we do that has helped the longevity of the show, we discuss spiritual issues, but we're not a quote-unquote Christian show. Right. We talk sports, but we're not a sports show. We talk politics, we're not a political show. Uh, we have thrown food off buildings. We're, we're not a zoo format. The fact that we have a lot of different pitches uh, yeah. to throw has made it fun for us, and I think it's made it fun for the audience. It's hurt us some in the radio business because, you know, when people want to put on a show, they want a news talk show or they want a sports show or they want a zoo or somebody cutting up. We do a little bit of all of it, and I think that's really the key to our longevity. It's probably hindered our growth a little bit yeah. in the industry because they want you to be a genre and fit in it, but uh, I think it's, it's really what's kept us going. I think they're hardworking people, uh, people who, who work hard, who get after it, who don't make excuses, who are not looking for a handout. They, they, they've earned their way. Uh, I think those people are really a large part of our audience, uh, and, and I think that... Um, that the show resonates with them because I think they say these guys say the things I want to say. Our, our audience, they're very respectful. I, I mean, the, the only thing that the audience really has ever done, I can't think of maybe one incident in the entire 30 years and some change that somebody might have been inappropriate, but these people are just so good to us and, and they're so encouraging to us that it has never been a problem. We've lived our lives normally and all they do is encourage us. I'm kind of right opposite. I, I like to be, you know, for people to say something. If I'm out to eat and somebody comes by and says, hey, I love the show, I like to, if somebody doesn't say something, I get worried. Yeah. You know, and uh, there was that one time I got kind of depressed and Rick said, put your Rick and Bubba shirt on and walk down to the mall and you'll be fine. Right. And, uh, you know, uh, there was a lot of love that day. So, yeah, uh, yeah it's, uh, we, we just love the interaction. I love people and, um, and, and this is a great medium to, to be a people person. Yeah, I'll tell you what, what's great about it. Uh, I, I tell this story all the time. We had just bought some hunting land connected to our farm that we have in Chilton County. And I was out there, and I just bought it. And a guy drove up, and he was going to hunt. And I said, hey, man, I want you to know that I just bought this land. It's connected to my farm right there, and you can't hunt out here anymore. You know, my family is going to be hunting and riding four-wheelers out here. And he said, you talking about that farm right there? And I said, yes, sir. And he goes, well, I got on pretty good authority. That farm belongs to Rick and Bubba. And I said, I am Rick, sir. And it's Rick, not Rick and Bubba. And, uh, but that's the connection, you know. I mean, it's, uh, they even, you know, they, they were going to get up and defend somebody trying to act like that, the, that they might have been messing with the farm. So, yeah. I, you know, so that's the loyalty, and I just wouldn't swap anything for it. It is going to be out of control. It's going to be everything you've loved over 30 years times two. We're going to have fun. We're going to laugh. We're going to cut up. We're going to do the same things we've done, and we want to go out on top top of the ratings, top of the revenue, and we want to give our listeners who have propped us up and carried us through the dark and low moments yeah, man. Uh, over time, we want to give them a celebration on the way out. Yeah, we've said it before. This audience and what you guys have done for us, you deserve us to do the best shows this year we've ever done, and that is exactly what we intend to do. For me, I will, I will probably go on to do radio. If I, I mean, I have some opportunities that, uh, that I'm looking into right now. I certainly want to continue to do it. Uh, I will continue to do the men's ministry stuff. My wife and I do marriage conferences. And, you know, now that we're empty nesters, I love, you know, doing a radio show. And I love how that works uh, to get people to come out and also to, the, the, to speak and to teach and, and the Wednesday Bible study and uh, all those things. I just love doing them. So I, I intend to do those um, uh, because that's what I've always loved. And as long as I can mentally and physically do it, and only the Lord knows how long that'll be, uh, I plan on continuing to do what I've been wanting to do since I was a child. I'm planning on doing oversized modeling. <laughs> <laughs>